Good afternoon, Money.net Live. We're back here. And if you know me, I love Anne Marie Van. How are you, Anne Marie? I am well. I am well. Luckily, I took my Dramamine for the roller coaster that we had early this morning. Sure. So we're all set. You know, one of the themes that we've seen lately, and I've heard from a couple of people now, is uh, low volume in the markets. Um, what, are you, what are you seeing there? So this is a very important topic. I'm really glad you started off with okay. this. So a lot of folks look at the day yesterday and they go, oh my goodness, look at this motion. We're recovered. We're headed back to 470 in SPY. We're headed to 4,700 in the ES. And you know what? That might be true. But the number one thing that a lot of traders are talking about, especially traders with deep pockets, is how illiquid the broad markets are. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about something being illiquid, we'll see that traders have a tendency, uh, do I want to say that? Yeah, we do. We have a <laughs> tendency, we have a tendency just to look at price. And if we're ahead of the game, we'll be only looking at price primarily, but right. we'll look at price and we won't think about the volume associated with price or the overall feel of the market. What have the traders just accomplished? What have the traders just decided that they're going to do? So just right. a few moments ago, the traders came into the close of March. And they've started to bounce a little bit from a broad perspective. And so this illiquidity that we're seeing causes a lot of price action to retrace. And so it makes a lot of traders really nervous if they compare one day to the next, one week to the next, and they get very uh, enthusiastic about chasing breakouts because everything's moving so quickly they think they're going to lose the bubble right. but the fact of the matter is the broad market is very illiquid there is low volume at spaces that some of the big institutional houses are saying they haven't seen in many many years many and years so, okay yeah wow. okay. so it's uh if you look up I'll, I wish I could find, I'll look for that in just a moment. It's on the Fred site. Okay. Um, and it's just showing how little the motion is. And so some people have this idea that retail traders move the market. And folks, we simply do not. We mm -hmm. know all of our pockets together could not give us the leverage and motion of the institutional uh, folks, they are going to be in charge. And so you just want to watch. And so where, if you were looking for value and you saw the market spike up and you looked at, hmm, I wonder what's going on. And we closed last month at a particular number. Where do you think the value event is going to come in? It's going to try and come in at the open of the current month. Now, Maybe that works, maybe it doesn't, but you know they're going to be there. So if you're short, that's something that you have to go, you know, I'm going to pull some of my short position off because I, I personally think we're in a very wide sideways formation. Yeah. Especially, I mean, tech was moving at 3x to the downside of the broad market today in the morning. So it's been, it's been fairly ugly. Yeah, so that's what I would say about that. I'd say watch that liquidity. Just, you know, if you go, wow, I don't have any big tools, zoom out and um, look at your spy chart and put a moving average on the volume and you will see it move down. Okay, let's talk about the spy. Last week, you, you hit it. You said 457 was the place. Yes, well, you know what? It went a bit above it. And so I had sold an iron condor. And because I was trying to trap it in between spots and it breached. But one of the wonderful things that I've learned battling with the market is that a line that is supposed to be resistance doesn't mean it won't get broken. 
it just usually means it won't hold. And mm -hmm. if it ends up holding on a pullback, that old resistance becomes support. But what's happened is it hasn't held it. And so it drifted through the fade. We were able to collect, I think, 50% off of that. And it's a very lovely theta erosion trap things in the center because we're moving uh, pretty sideways in, in the broad scheme of things. Okay. So, so you nailed that 457 and you were, we're sitting here at 453-ish, 453.50 now. Yeah. What are you thinking? Well, um, I'd love to just, uh, show you my chart. Absolutely. You're good okay. to go. You can share your screen. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Let's, uh, yep. That's good. Share. Okay. And so what I am uh, looking at is a line chart and it's a spy. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at a yearly chart okay. and you know, I, for those of you who haven't uh, moved to the money.net platform, it is incredibly robust and very stellar. I really, really enjoy it a ton. Just my two cents. And I'm looking at something very simple. I'm looking at- And just at, for everybody's <laughs> edification, I did not pay you to say that. No, no, absolutely I, not. Thank you. Yes. Um, so what we are looking at here is something very straightforward. It's um, a Bollinger Band mm -hmm. and it's a 20 simple moving average. It's just very standard. And you can see right here that we are walking the band. This is what John Bollinger calls walking the band. But right after the edge of walking the band, we move out into the center of the band, no longer walking it. And so this really tells us, hey, we're taking a breath. You can confirm that by looking at easy. This is a momentum formation. And you know, it's always best to just look at, well, is it mostly going up or is it mostly going down? You don't need to get overly granular here. What you want to think about is what is price doing, right? And so you can see right here that the chart is saying, listen, I'm taking a breath right now and I'm likely to revert to the mean. Do you see how big the band is? Mm -hmm. It's awfully wide here. Notice with a Bollinger Band, when you start moving, take a look, this is a perfect example. When you start moving away from the band, you're very likely to hit the center of the band, right? Notice this starts moving away from the band. It touches the center of the band, but the slope is down. And so when it moves to the center of the band, unless it recaptures, it's gonna go back down and touch the edge and so on and so forth. That's really, hello, what did I just do? <laughs> Undo. Um, Holy smokes. You can add it back in. I'm looking. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, to, to the, the middle one there with the, not the chart types, but the, at the top there. There you this go. This one. No, yeah. No, the next one to the left. Next one. To the, to the right. left. The left. Left. Good grief. Yeah. The other left you went. Oh, there's your band. Right there the top. Left. Popular studies. Oh. At the very top. There it is. There we go. Yeah. All right. Okay, so here we are again, taking just a look at them. So the number one thing when we think about being in the market, in this kind of market, you want to think about the very straightforward thing with no matter what you're looking at. Am I moving up or down? And the way you can tell is by putting a crosshair in the middle of your chart and seeing if you can say, well, it looks like I'm moving up or it looks like I'm moving down or in this case, it looks like I'm moving up and moving down. And so in those kinds of spaces, you know, you really are caught in a range. Let's, let's pop in something that 
doesn't have a range like this. This hmm. is the energy, the XLE. You can see that if I put my crosshair here, there's clearly a breakout area and old resistance, which is right over here where the cross is, comes in as new support. But again, notice it's just taking a little breather and coming into a sideways formation. The great thing about John Bollinger is these tight formations expand and then they tighten again and expand. And so here you see them tightening. We're off for a move somewhere, right? We're off for a move somewhere. And so what this gives us is a pretty good example of, all right, I'm going to pick that to trade. And so if you want to look at something from an options perspective, consider the bottom of the band. Remember, it's trending. And so when you're trending, you literally can look at the bottom of the band and anticipate that it's some kind of support action. And so that makes this kind of uh, price point super easy to work through. You could have a 72 here. And of course, I love selling the puts and I'm going to sell a put spread so as to uh, manage my risk. I don't think I'm going to sell a call spread because energy is probably going to keep grinding to the north for a little while. That's okay. my thought. So that's really what I will look at. For something like SPY, it's still telling us, hey, you know, you can sell the ranges here. You just need time and uh, a little bit of motion. So you might want to go out, you know, a couple of weeks. What I like to do to find the option space, um, this is really great. And again, I am learning it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm super glad you're here to help me. Uh, <laughs> but from the option space, it will give you um, unusual option activity and a very nice, clean opening for what's going on from your chain. So if we look at SPY, right, and we say, all right, give me, these are the ones that expire to, uh, to mark Friday, 8th. Hmm. Is the 8th Friday? Eighth. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so these are the ones that expire on Friday. You can see that there's a ton of premium sitting in here. And my favorite thing, of course, is a lot of volume. That's what makes these work so nicely. We've got the spreads look a little wide here, comparatively speaking, but still not nearly as wide as you might see in other spaces. So I really like this. It allows me to take a look at my chart in combination with what's going on. And so I can look down here, right? Look at the, the exposure here. There's a volume of 20,000 today. Now we don't know whether that has put us um, in a net open interest of a bullish action or a bearish action because open interest is something that we have to use to calculate whatever is going on here. But today, there's a lot of activity at 455. Now notice, if we take a look at the morning, here is the 455 level. You can see the crosshair right here. And so they either bought it thinking it was going to rise to the top or they sold it thinking it was going to fade into the monthly open. Mm -hmm. And so it still gives us an opportunity to look at something and go, wow, you know, if I sold that 455, um, I could have a really nice, uh, wow, that's very interesting motion that's going on right there. If I sold that 455, as it comes back up into the space, I know that my price action easily could move to 457.50. So you have two and a half uh, dollars wide in terms of your risk expiring for Friday. And that monthly support action 
really does show you, hey, you know, if I pull backwards here, I'm very likely to hang out at around 450. And so you're able to trap the price in there for a couple of days and give uh, give yourself a, a pretty nice option space. Let me look at my other machine and see what I like that. I will I would sell that at. So if I have the 455. They don't have 457.50, so we'll use 458. And then we'll use 450. And uh, what is that? Uh, three wide, 55, 58, three, yeah. 47. That gives us a buck 84, which is more than 250. I mean, more than halfway yeah. of the 250. And the delta is still only five. And so remember from last time, we talked about deltas being exceptionally small in a position means that the probability of winning becomes much greater Wait, on our side. So nice. yeah, I like that. And those are the things that I look for really all day long. And they have been, you know, not... Uh, not hard to find, but a little nerve wracking to hold considering yesterday right, blew right up over the edge of that. And so, you know, if you're a human, your brain goes, oh, wait, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe <laughs> I'm. Would, would you say that the algos have been taken over lately? Oh, my word. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They're. There is so much algorithmic trading, which is why I was trying to tell folks, listen, I know you think the power of the retail trader might be something important to look at. In general, it's never going to be that important. Right. Un unfortunately, I mean. As I, as I always say, you can may win a battle, but you'll never win the war. Exactly. They have too much money, too much speed, too much knowledge, and too much leverage. There's absolutely no way that we could beat them. And so our best bet is simply to find out where they're playing and uh, get ourselves involved. And you Always. nailed it last week. You said 457 on the spy. Yeah. And so it was just a really, um, you know, some, sometimes we don't nail it. And the, the big thing is just make sure that if you're wrong, that you can stomach the risk. And right. for me, that's always because I trade to eat, you know, I, I always am thinking there are some fabulous trades that have just left me in the dust, but the risk parameters were just not the ones that I could take. And, and that, so, that, tells, that says a lot about your trading style that you're able to, you know, when the risk reward, you already know all that, the, the, the brain power is there, but you're also having to trade against yourself too, right? Sometimes. Oh, absolutely. It's very hard looking in the window, seeing everybody have a, at a party and me being outside, right. right? Which a lot of times these big moves, you know, especially in the Twitter sphere where nobody gets any, any calls wrong. <laughs> Wink, wink, never, nudge, I don't nudge. think I've found anybody say they can be missed. Right. 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 Exactly. So, you know, you just are, are um, it's, it's a tough space. And what's really great, again, is that you've got, you're following some really good uh, Twitter accounts that just give you a ton of information in terms of moving up the chain and you can see we us have running. we've added about 80 different twitters uh yeah it's good twitter. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah i've nice. been digging around looking at them and and several of them i follow already and i've added a few more of these um to my list so really good, really good. nice they, yeah. they came from yeah, my tweet please. deck, so uh, I'm always happy to share my tweet deck, right? Well, Anne-Marie, it's always a pleasure, and we will see you right back here next week. Absolutely. For Money.net Live, this is Big Beat and Anne-Marie from thetradingbook.com. We'll see you next time. Thank you.